Who's here? A noble duke. In nature, as in name. But what is his name? Orsino. Orsino? Oh, I have heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And so is now. Or was so very late, for but a month ago I went from hence, and then was fresh in murmur. As you know, what great ones do, the less will prattle of. But he did seek the love of fair Olivia. What's she? A virtuous maid, the daughter of a count that died some twelve months since, then leaving her in the protection of his son, her brother, who shortly also died. For whose dear love, they say, she hath abjured the company and sight of men. Oh, that I serve, that lady, and might not be delivered to the world till I have made mine own occasion mellow what my estate is. Never hard to compass, because she will admit no kind of suit. No, not the duke's. There is a fair behavior in thee, Captain. I pray thee, and I'll pay thee bounteously. Conceal me what I am, and be my aid for such disguise as haply shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this duke. Thou shalt present me as an eunuch to him. What else may help to time I will commit? Only shape thou thy silence to my wit. Be you his eunuch, and your mute I'll be. When my tongue blabs, then let mine eyes not see. I thank thee. Lead me on. If music be the food of love, play on. Give me excessive that surfeiting the appetite may sicken and so die. But that strain again. Oh, it had a dying fall. Oh, it came over my ear like a sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving odor. Enough. No more. It's not so sweet now as it was before. Oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou. That notwithstanding thy capacity receiveth as the sea, naught enters there. Of what validity and pitch so is, but falls into abatement and low price, even in a minute. It's so full of shapes is fancy that it alone is high fantastical. Will you go? Haunt, my lord? What, Curio? The haunt? Why, so I do. The noblest that I have. Oh, when mine eyes did see Olivia first, methought she purged the air of pestilence. That instant was I turned into a heart, and my desires, like fell and cruel hounds, ere since pursue me. Well, how now? What news from her? So please, my lord, I might not be admitted, but from her hand may do return this answer. The element itself till seven years heat shall not behold her face at ample view. But like a cloister she will veil and walk in water once a day, her chamber round with eye offending brine. All this to season a brother's dead love, which she would keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance. Oh, for she that hath a heart of that fine frame to pay this debt of love but to her brother. Well, how will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else that live in her, when liver, brain, and heart, these sovereign thrones, are all supplied and filled her sweet perfections with one self king. Oh, away before me to sweet beds of flowers. Love thoughts lie rich when canopied with boughs. Oh, what a plague means my niece to take the death of her brother thus. I'm sure tears an enemy to life. By my throat, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier nights. Your cousin, my lady, takes great exception to your ill hours. Why let her accept before accepting? Aye, but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in. So be these shoes, too. Maybe not, but hang themselves in their own straps. That quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday. And of a foolish knight we brought here one night to be her wooer. Who, Sir Andrew Agee? Aye, he. He's as tall a man as that he's in other area. What's that to the purpose? Why, he has 3,000 ducats a year. Aye, but he'll have but a year in all these ducats. He's a very fool and a prodigal. <laughs> Finally, you say so? He plays on the, 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 the old gamboys and 
speaks three or four languages word for word without book? Then that's all the good gifts of nature. He have indeed almost natural. For besides that he's a fool, he's a great quarreler, and but that he hath the gift of a coward to allay the gusty hath in quarreling, tis thought among the prudent he would quickly have the gift of a grave. By this hand they are scoundrels and some doctors that say so of him. Who are they? They that add moreover <laughs> is drunk nightly in your company. <laughs> With drinking health to my knees. <laughs> Drink to her as long as there is passage in my throat and drink in Illyria. He's a coward and a coitus that will not drink to my knee. Sir Toby Belt. How <laughs> now, Sir Toby Belt? Sweet Sir Andrew. <laughs> Bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. A cost. Sir Andrew Acosta. What's that? My niece's chambermaid. Good Mistress Acosta, I desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Good Mistress Mary Acosta. <laughs> you mistake, knight. Acosta is front her, board her, woo her, assail her. By my truth, I would not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of Acosta? Very <laughs> well, gentlemen. And now let part so surrender would that I might never draw sword again. And you part so mistress I would I might never draw sword again. Fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, I have not you by the hand. Mary, but you shall have, and here's my hand. Now, sir, thought is free. I pray you, bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. Wherefore, sweetheart? What's your metaphor? It's dry, sir. Why, I think so. I am not such an ass, but I can keep my hand dry. But what's your jest? A dry jest, sir. Are you full of them? Aye, sir. I have them at my fingers' ends. Mary, now I let go of your hand. I am barren. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, knight! Thou lackst the cup of canary. When did I see thee so put down? Never in your life, I think, unless you see canary put me down. <laughs> and I think sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has, but I am a great eater of beef, and I believe that does harm to my wit. No, <laughs> And I thought that, I'd forswear it. I'll ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Uh, pourquoi, my dear knight? What is pourquoi? Do or not do? I would. I had bestowed that time in tongues that I had in fencing, dancing, and bear baiting. Oh, had I but followed the arts. Then hadst thou had an excellent head of hair. Why, would that have mended my hair? Best question. But thou seest thee will not curl by nature. But it becomes me well enough, does it not? Excellent. It hangs like flax on a distaff. <laughs> and I hope to see a housewife take thee between her legs and spin it off. <laughs> Faith, I'll home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen, or if she be, it's four to one, she'll none of me. The Count himself here hard by woos her. She'll none of the Count. She'll not match above her degree, neither in estate, years, nor wit. I've heard her swear. This life in man. I'll stay a month longer. <laughs> <laughs> I am a fellow of the strangest mind in the world. I delight in masks and revels, sometimes all together. What is thy excellence in a galleon? My faith, I can cut a caper. <laughs> <laughs> and I can cut the mutton to it. And I think I have the back trick. Simply as strong as any man in Illyria. <laughs> Wherefore are these things here? Wherefore are these gifts a curtain before them? Is there a world to hide virtues in? I can think by the excellent constitution of thy leg, it was formed under the star of a galley. Shall we set about some rebels? <laughs> what shall we do else? Were we not born under Taurus? Taurus, that's sides and hearts. No, sir, it's legs and thighs. <laughs> now, let me see the paper. Oh, here yeah, I am. Oh, yeah. ah, excellent! <laughs> continues these favors towards you, Cesario, you would like to be much advanced. He had known you but three days, and already you are no stranger. 
You either fear his humor or my negligence that you call in question.